listen to the last 10 Paladins players who play the game on a daily basis and have a personal vendetta against Overwatch for some reason? This video isn't for you. Paladins vs Overwatch is a debate that has existed for years, but it was also a debate that was hard to make because one game is free to play and made by a smaller company, and one game is paid and made by a triple A company. But recently, circumstances have drastically changed. Overwatch's multiplayer no longer costs money and went from being 6 vs 6 to 5 vs 5. What this now means is that Paladins and Overwatch are both 5v5 hero shooters. Both games being free to play means they are now on the same playing field. Consumers can download and play either of these games without spending a dime. But the question is, which one should they play? In this wonderful video, we are going to compare the two games. We are going to cover as many elements as we possibly can and see how each game handles them. So let's start off with the first and most important element the gameplay. So without further ado, cue that silly transition. I think it's fair we start off with Paladins as it's the lesser known game so we can give it a fair shot. So how does Paladins work? How different is it gameplay wise than Overwatch? Well for starters, Paladins isn't simply a 5v5 hero shooter, there is much more to it than that. Overwatch on the other hand is much simpler, but Paladins is sort of a mix between a MOBA and a hero shooter, which is why the joke of Paladins barely being a shooter has existed for years. Starting off with the most important system Paladins has, talents and loadouts. Talents are simple to understand. At the beginning of every match, you are shown three of your character's talents. You choose one of them and you'll stick with that for the entire match. A talent is something that modifies or strengthens certain abilities or attributes, sometimes with a downside to balance things out. Your loadout is a set of 5 cards with a maximum of 15 points. You can give each card 1 to 5 points depending on how much you need that card's ability. Trust me. It's a lot simpler than it sounds. There are 5 cards for every ability, and 5 cards that affect your character, so you're given a lot of options to customize your build. You can really mix and match to your heart's content. This talented loadout system gives every character multiple playstyles, preventing them from being boring. For example, Grover, a support character who can play like a crazy healer, aggressive DPS, or even a sniper. Now, as great as a system is, there's also another great system which makes games feel like they're slowly accelerating. Games like League of Legends, Dota 2, and Smite have had it for years. A lot of you know it as the item shop. During your matches, you'll earn a currency called credits. You can use this currency to buy items, and you can upgrade each one two or more times to maximize its effectiveness. You can only hold a maximum of four items. There are four types of items. Defense, Utility, Healing, and Offense. I don't think I need to explain what each category does when they're all pretty self-explanatory. Now that we have all of this in mind, how does Overwatch 2 compare? Well, Overwatch doesn't need to do much to beat out Paladins. It just does so many basic things right, Paladins just gets ratioed. Something as simple as servers, the main thing you need to even have the game functioning is done so bad in Paladins, yet done very well in Overwatch. If we just ignore the disaster that was Overwatch 2's launch, Overwatch has great servers. Having great servers usually comes down to a financial thing. The reason games like Fall Guys, Fortnite, and Rocket League have great servers is because they have comical amounts of money backing them up. Paladins might be backed by Hi-Rez, a company which has titles that are nothing to scoff at, but they just don't care about Paladins as much as they do their other IPs, which is why Paladins has stinky servers which will stay this way for years to come unless Hi-Rez does something about it. Now some of you might be asking yourself, what does server quality have to do with gameplay? Well. My answer to that question is how much money you got? How much money you got? A lot. Having terrible servers means things as simple as movement and movement abilities, and even things as trivial as sitting on the payload feel horrible. There's this really great video out there called The State of Paladin Servers in 2021 by I'm Penguin. And don't let the title fool you because all of the issues he talks about in that video still remain in the game to this day. Instead of telling you how bad Paladin servers are, I'll just play the clip compilation he made at the beginning of the video. So shout out I'm Penguin and roll the clips. 
These clips are of ranked and custom servers alike in the recent day and age of Paladin's Champions of the Realm. Dude, holy sh this game sucks so bad! I'm gonna. <laughs> nice. One thing mid. I'm on well right now. Okay, Ash, bro. Dash again, Ash, I'm low. Ash, mid, absolute. They're low here. I, dude, I just need a pocket if I'm gonna fight these DPS. <laughs> yeah, I really appreciate that. Thank you. What? What? Every time I watch one of the trillion State of Paladins videos, Paladins content creators feel obligated to make every few months, <laughs> server issues and game breaking bugs are always an issue. Curb ZM and Raven Trick have actively been vocal about their gripes with Paladins. They never sugarcoat anything, they'll always say it as it is. There are bugs in Paladins that have actually existed for years and have never been fixed, and the trivial bugs that come with every new update take months to fix. The only potential reasoning behind this is bad management and laziness. It really shouldn't take around 4 months to fix some small audio bug. Now Blizzard isn't completely off the hook with this one. Overwatch 2 is definitely a victim to laziness. Merely a week after the game's launch, Bastion was removed for 2 weeks to fix a game breaking bug they definitely could have fixed within a few days. Blizzard is also definitely a victim of bad management, as all of the headlines surrounding the launch of Overwatch 2 weren't exactly positive. You had Jeff Kaplan leaving mid-development and the executive producer leaving mid-development as well, so it wasn't looking bright for Overwatch 2. Alright, enough talking about servers, bugs, and technical stuff, I imagine you're all getting sick of it, and so am I. So let's talk about a gameplay difference that's actually interesting. Shields and CC. Talking about how Shields and CC is dealt with in both games is very important, as one game has removed almost every semblance of it, and one game suffers from it more than ever. Overwatch 1 suffered a ton from shields and CC. Also, for some of you that don't know, CC means crowd control. Things like disabling, stuns, etc, etc. Look, I didn't know what it meant until a year ago. All I thought CC meant was closed captions. Look, you learn something new every day. Anyway, back to the video. Overwatch 1 devolved into just shield and CC until someone got their ultimate and then the game moved slightly. It was very boring to watch and play. Overwatch 2 removed so much CC and made a lot of stationary characters more mobile to keep the game moving. For example, Bastion used to have an ability called the Recon Mode, where he becomes a stationary turret and can stay in it forever. But in Overwatch 2, he can now move while in turret mode, but he can only be in it for 6 seconds and it's on a 12 second cooldown. So gone the days of Bastion sitting on a payload, holding left click with a Reinhardt and Arissa shielding him. McCree, sorry, Cassidy no longer has a flashbang, but has a magnetic grenade that deals 135 damage. Orissa no longer has a shield or her pulling projectile, but now has more aggressive abilities like a javelin throw and a javelin spin. Bridget no longer has a... Wait, is it Bridget or Brigitta? Ma I, 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 I don't care with these stupid names. I call her Bridget. Everyone's like, Brigitta. I am sick and tired. Bridget no longer has a stun on her shield bash, but got six buffs to make up for it. The damage, distance, cooldown, and more has all drastically been increased. These are just a taste of the amazing changes they've done to make the game a lot more fun than its predecessor. If you want to know the rest of the changes they've done to each hero, you can check out this video by Car Q called Every Hero Change for Overwatch 2 vs Overwatch 1. Now how does Paladins handle shield and CC? Well, it doesn't. <laughs> Almost every character has a CC ability, tanks refuse to die, and because of that, some games tend to be insanely boring. Despite all the talents, loadouts, and items, 
sometimes the games just don't feel like they're moving, like the enemy team wins by default rather than skill. Paladins isn't going to randomly remove almost every CC ability in the game like Overwatch 2 did, because if they were to do that, they would have to rebalance the whole game because a lot of characters would struggle to function without them. Every Paladins content creator has complained about the meta and how boring it is, yet it hasn't changed for years, and that's because high res's priority is skins and characters which only bring players back for around a week. More on that later, by the way. Oh my god, bro. Oh, hell no. It's reasons like this which made me title the video the way it is. Overwatch is just a way better directed game than Paladins. As much of a mess as it is, at least it knows its identity and its limits. For example, Kiriko might have seemed like an out of place character in a game which the lore mostly revolves around robots and humans going at war, but with her design and background, she begins to fit more and more. Then Paladins on the other hand, what even is Kasumi? What the hell? I know in this gameplay segment I might have not talked about Overwatch as much, but that's because it's just a really simple and very polished game. It's just a really good 5v5 hero shooter. There aren't that many server issues. The game is well balanced, only a select few characters are slightly unbalanced, almost all the maps are beautiful and fun to play on. The only big problems with Overwatch 2 right now are related to the monetization, which I do admit is pretty bad, but besides that, Overwatch 2 is pretty good. So now that we understand the gameplay differences between Overwatch 2 and Paladins, how about the design, whether it be the characters, maps, or how they all work together? Well. No other way to find out other than queuing that silly transition. Just like the gameplay segment, we're gonna start with Paladins. And before we talk about Paladins design-wise, I think I should address something pretty important which plays a big factor into how Paladins looks and functions. Paladins is running on Unreal Engine 3. They are two engines behind and are doing nothing about it. In case anyone's been wondering why Paladins looks so outdated, well, there's your reasoning. Paladins does make up for it by going with a fantasy theme, so the lower quality doesn't really affect it. Matter of fact, I asked a few friends which of these maps looks more high quality, and the answers were pretty surprising. I'm going to show you a map from two different games, which one looks higher quality and why. Okay. Uh, do I answer? <laughs> yeah, that was, the, that was the question. <laughs> shut up, shut up. Okay. Uh, go um, ahead. uh, I'd say the first picture. Really? Why? Well, the second picture, it kind of looks like a bunch of, like, assets, free assets put together. Like... <laughs> <laughs> it looked like if you went on Roblox and you went in the in the free toolbox, you just put a bunch of together. <laughs> There's more of a theme to the first one. Uh, quality, uh, I think the second one because the I don't know the the vibe of it, the way of the map is structured and the graphics. So definitely the second one. High quality. Hmm. I feel like the first one has more detail. It looks a little more detailed a little more clean the background has more stuff going on the second one does not look as detailed to be honest maybe it looks a little cleaner but it's a little less busy i, I still like the first one a little more though to be honest both of them have nice ideas like i would like the one up top how it has like the massive fox on it statue is like basic fantasy but the bottom is like interesting it's like this uh like formula one-esque even the like building so I think the bottom wins because like it employs like some more interesting ideas, like creative ideas for a map with the Formula One car. So, after analyzing both of the pictures, the second one clearly appears to be higher quality. And your reasoning? Um, I can just see more detail. And I think I might have to go with the 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 one at the bottom, the lower one. It just looks it looks more neat. It looks more visually pleasing. It looks like, you know, slightly more time was spent on it, I guess. It looks more open, with, 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 with much fewer or far fewer distractions when, you know, you're trying to fight an enemy, I guess. 
Okay, so the first one, uh, it looks like nice and it has any yani, higher graphics, but the second one has better li lighting. But you see, the better quality is the first one. Man, freedom is peace for women. Oh God! Oh God! Now, while I personally don't think the Paladins map looks better. I completely understand their reasons. Also, the first person I asked is a very talented artist, so it's a slight chance they know a little more than me by design. Go check her out on Insta, by the way. She does some very, very nice work. The people I spoke to have never played either game in their lives. Me being a virgin loser who has over 100 hours in both games have a little more to say about these maps. After all, they judge them by one random screenshot of a new map from each game. It's not their fault, but let me give my two cents. The reason I think Overwatch's maps look better is that they feel more real. These areas, I can see them existing in the real world, and they wouldn't feel too out of place. As for Paladins, what is Frog Isle even supposed to be? Some of you might think this argument is unfair because some of Overwatch's maps are based off some already existing areas, and Paladins theme is fantasy, but there are a lot of fantasy style games out there that their areas feel very immersive. Wonderlands, Elder Scrolls, and Monster Hunter are all great examples of this. A great example of immersion and something simple is that in Overwatch, most maps have bars and restaurants which you can take cover in. Some fights can be engaged in those areas, and when it happens, it feels a lot more immersive. Because not only are bullets and projectiles flying around, there's plates, glasses, bottles, chairs, and tables flying around the room as well. This doesn't affect the fight in any way, but little details like this just makes the fight feel more real. When you get in a fight in a small indoor area in Paladins, the environment kinda just exists. It's nothing more than a roof, a floor, some walls in different shapes and sizes. There's usually not much else going on. Something as simple as spawn rooms are done 10 times better in Overwatch. In almost every control map, you can melee this basketball into this hoop, and when you score, you get a little sound effect and some confetti. In Busan, you can interact with this karaoke machine, and your character can say a little cute voice line. Sexy, sexy rain, huh? Oh yes, here we go! Move your legs and move your arms! That is how we do the dance! <laughs> In another spawn room, on that same map, there's even a DDR machine which you can kind of play. I have more playtime on Paladins on PC, and yet I don't remember anything you can interact with. Sure, some spawn rooms looked really cool like this one on Bazaar, but they weren't nearly as memorable as Overwatch's spawn rooms. Little details like this add so much personality to maps. Alright, now that we're done discussing maps, let's talk characters. Now. This is going to be a bit complicated as a lot of this is subjective, but I'll try to tackle this as neutral as possible. Here's a great example on why this is complicated. If I ask someone to identify these two characters, more people will be able to identify the character on the left, but if I ask them which one looks cooler, more people will choose the character on the right. The character on the left is more memorable, but the character on the right looks more appealing. Now. This analogy I'm about to make sounds very stupid, but if you understand what I'm trying to say, then you will very easily understand the point I'm trying to make. So uh, here goes nothing. Halloween only lasts for one day, and while it's a great day and you see a lot of cool things, imagine if Halloween was around all year. Every day people would wear these outrageous costumes, and people would munch on candy, and watch horror movies, and play horror games. As fun as this all sounds, you get sick of it pretty quickly. I know the analogy I just made sounded very stupid, like something a 6th grader wrote and thought he was the next Kendrick Lamar, but I really hope you guys understood what I was trying to say. Overwatch 2's character designs are simple, but not so simple that they're boring. Paladin's designs are all over the place. Most are fitting, but some of them make you question what's going on behind closed doors. No way, yeah, yeah. Now individually, maps and character designs can be up for debate, but seeing it all come together when we show gameplay side to side tells a whole different story. Once the UI, the map, the characters, and everything come together to form the gameplay, 
things look very different. One game looks like it came from mobile and got ported to PC in 2015, and one of them looks like a decent hero shooter. Speaking of UI, I just realized I completely forgot to talk about that, so let's get that over with and then we'll move on. But this time, we'll start off with Overwatch's UI as I've got more to say about that one. Overwatch 2's UI is very basic and not too different from its predecessor, but it does possess a few issues. The first one being that Overwatch 2 doesn't display your rank or the enemy team's rank like it used to do, which is a huge problem. Overwatch 2 also doesn't display your level anymore, which is sad, but that's because you don't level up anymore. You just level up your battle pass. Thank you Blizzard for such a fun change, I used to not care about leveling up, and now I care even less. They removed victory cards at the end of matches as well, which really had no reason to be removed, it was just a fun feature. It wasn't invasive or toxic, but cool I guess? The only positive UI change is that you can see your team and the enemy team's stats instead of just your own. This should have been a thing since Overwatch 1, but better late than never, I guess. At least now when you want to trash talk your team or the enemy team, you can just look at the stats to see who's doing bad instead of guessing who you think did bad and flaming someone who wasn't part of the problem at all. I cannot tell you the amount of times some useless DPS who is somehow playing Junkrat and dealing low damage, I did not know this was possible, would flame me for being useless on Sigma when I'm pulling off stats like this. Overwatch 2's UI isn't bad at all, it's just inoffensive. Being able to see everyone's stats is my favorite change, but besides that, Overwatch 2's UI is just boring. Now Paladin's UI on the other hand is honestly not that bad, I just have a few gripes with it. This is just my personal opinion, but I think the style they went with for the ability icons and the borders makes it look really cheap. I don't know, it just looks like something out of a mobile game. Also, having all the player icons on the top corners of the screen honestly seems quite unnecessary to me. I mean, if we can just hold tab for a second to get that intel, what's the point of having it on the top corners? It just seems like wasted screen space. Hey guys, Editor Bogres here. Sorry for breaking the flow of the video, but I've recently discovered some things that make my points come off a lot weaker than they should be. Ladies and gentlemen, the reason my game's UI doesn't look as bad as I'm making it out to be is that my settings are different and I completely forgot. Allow me to explain. About a year ago, I played with this dude on the Paladin server, great guy, very chill, and he knew a lot about technology, software, and hardware, so he offered to tell me about some settings that would make my Paladin's experience a lot better, because I was playing on default settings all this time. One of those settings was to max my FOV, which is the best decision I have ever made in Paladins. It made my experience so much better. But there were a lot of other settings which were tweaked, which I genuinely do not remember changing. This is how default Paladin's UI looks like. This right here is what I'm really commentating about. And this is my UI. The easiest differences to spot is the FOV and the fact my abilities are in the corner and not in the middle. And for some reason, my UI is slightly smaller, but I think that has to do with the monitor. Also, the criminally laggy gameplay you were unfortunately witnessing was my attempt at playing Paladins today. I just felt like hopping on, and so I did. And uh, no, in case you're wondering, it wasn't an internet issue. I checked my internet immediately after because I was concerned, and it was just <laughs> palad paladin servers being paladin servers. So, so uh, sorry for interrupting the the video, and let's just get back to it. <laughs> One last thing I kinda don't like about Paladin's UI is that whenever there's some sort of effect on your character like cauterize, burning, revealed, or whatever it may be, comically large text with an icon of the effect appears on screen. Previously, I might have said that the UI on the bottom of the screen looks cheap, but no, this looks and feels cheap but at the same time, you're kind of between a rock and a hard place. If Paladins had an animation on screen that depicted every effect in the game, the game would just be unplayable because you couldn't see a damn thing. Unfortunately, we have to deal with text and icons on screen, but honestly, it's either that or the game looks even more messy than it already is. Paladins UI isn't bad, just like Overwatch 2, it's inoffensive, but personally, I'd much rather have my UI look simple rather than goofy. 
but that's just my opinion. You guys can let me know yours in the comments. Oh, and I forgot to mention, Paladins only lets you see everyone's stats at the end of the game rather than during it. But it's kind of funny because it's a similar sensation to seeing your friends report cards. You get nothing out of it, but hey, it's kind of cool. Alright, now one final thing I want to compare before we conclude the video is the replay system. Now, this might seem like something trivial, but not only is the replay system a very important tool, but both of these games treat them very differently. And here's how. We'll start off with Overwatch because Paladin's replay system is more confusing than trying to understand a Chris Angel stunt when you were a kid. You'll understand what I mean when we get to it. Overwatch's replay system is damn near perfect. In Overwatch 2, the only problem is when matches end, you literally get jump scared by some text and it feels very anticlimactic. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, the, the scream ending that way is just kind of funny. <laughs> While in Overwatch 1, you get the classic slow motion shot of when the matches end, and then you get the text. I'll explain how Overwatch's replay system works real quick to the people who've never seen or used it. The replay system in Overwatch allows you to rewatch a previous match. You're able to see the match in other people's perspectives, and even just a freeform view where you can watch things from any angle. You can also share matches around with a passcode they give you, which has led to the creation of one of my favorite ongoing YouTube series, Spectating Bronze with Flats. This series is incredibly funny and entertaining. He's done a few of them for Overwatch 2, so go check them out. Highly recommend it. The last notable feature for the replay system is that you can actually save some of them so they don't disappear once you've played enough matches. This obviously resets in the next patch, but you have plenty of time to just record however much of the replay you need. Alright, now for the Paladin's replay system. Honestly, it functions just as well as Overwatch. Naturally, things are a bit different here and there due to servers, bugs, different gameplay, whatever, but the system at its core is largely functional. Most of you are probably confused as to why I called Paladin's replay system functional. Didn't I make a joke about how confusing it was a minute ago? Well, dear viewer, buckle up as you're about to hear one of the stupidest things you've ever heard. Now for the requirements to view a replay in Paladin's. Well, for starters, it has to be ranked. Well, that already sucks because not that many people play ranked as there's not much of a reason to, but it couldn't possibly get worse, right? Well, there are three other requirements. These two aren't that bad though. It has to be under a week old and from the current patch. Sadly, there's no pin button, but you can just record whatever you need from the replay. Boy, aren't you guys glad to see me again. Hey guys. Editor Bograce here, interrupting the flow of the video once again, but a uh, long, 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 long story short, two lines out of this entire section did not get recorded, so that's unfortunate, but I'll just go ahead and say them here, and then we can, we can move on. So the final requirement to view a replay in Paladins is that there has to be at least one diamond player in your game. So, not only do you have to play ranked, but you actually have to be really good at it. So, uh, if you hit a crazy clip and you're not diamond, <laughs> sounds like a skill issue to me. Anyway, that's all I have for the design section, and it's time to move on to the conclusion. Uh, cue that silly transition. Why am I casting a spell on you? Just, <laughs> just play the transition, man. In this video, we didn't compare skins or the battle pass, and that's because I don't really care, and also it's very subjective. Paladin skin prices are objectively better though, but that's because Overwatch 2 skin prices are disgustingly high. A legendary skin is about $20, whether it's old or new. I don't think I need to explain why that's stupid. What's even stupider is that Blizzard added a feature where you can buy some of these skins individually instead of being forced to buy a bundle. I say this is stupid because the price doesn't change. I'm not too educated on Paladin's skin economy or whatever, but I haven't seen any complaints. The only complaint I see is that high res focuses too much on making skins rather than improving the game, but we already talked about that. Now me personally, 
I like Overwatch 2 a lot more than Paladins. I've had my fun with Paladins, but the lack of change over the years and the direction the game is going gives me little faith that things will get better. As much as everyone jokes about Overwatch 2 barely being a sequel, the change from 6v6 to 5v5, the purging of CC abilities and reliance on shields was a much needed change and made the game go from boring to really fun again. Overwatch 2 is the sequel we didn't know we needed. Paladins is a game that genuinely needs a sequel, but probably isn't getting one. It's insanely outdated, and nothing is being done about it. There are tons of multiplayer games out there that have survived for so many years because the companies behind them care about these games enough to the point where they never get stale. Fall Guys, Rocket League, Destiny 2, Rainbow Six Siege, Brawlhalla. Regardless of your opinion on these games, they are doing amazing numbers. Previously, I stated that Paladins needs a sequel, and I mean this with every fiber of my being. I don't say this because Paladins is a bad game, I say this because Paladins is an insanely messy game. The code is super messy due to the constant change in management and employees, leading to people being forced to deal with a the game, they have no idea what's going on with it. It's like being gifted a nice car, but half the parts are broken, some of them can't be repaired or replaced. You try contacting the owner to see what's wrong, and then he sends you a 143 megabyte image of him in Cuba with Tupac. <laughs> I know this analogy is weird, but, <laughs> but if you get it, you get it. To give you guys some perspective on how outdated Paladins is, the first games to use Unreal Engine 3 were released in 2006. I was 2 years old at that time. Unreal Engine 4, which is a far more acceptable engine to use in this day and age, was only released in 2014. Paladins was released in 2016. Paladins is in a really sad state where there are so many dedicated fans who love this game and want the best for it but they're also aware that hi -Rez is milking this game until it is 6 feet under with a bag of doodle -doo feces on its tombstone. hi -Rez is dangling the corpse of paladins in front of its last remaining fans by introducing half-baked champions, false promises, and most importantly, new skins! Ooh la la, I'm very excited for the 30th Tyra skin! Paladins is unfortunately a game that will always live in Overwatch's shadow. A lot of people resorted to Paladins because they couldn't afford Overwatch, but now that both games are free to play, there really is no reason to stick around for Paladins, unless you just prefer it over Overwatch. Overwatch 2 is a far more polished game, it doesn't need to rely on talents and loadouts to be dynamic. While it certainly has less characters, the characters in Overwatch are far more fleshed out and fit in the game really well. Paladins is a game struggling to survive in a space where free to play games are just getting better and better, therefore it's being left in the dust. Overwatch 2 isn't going to stop being free to play anytime soon, so if Paladins wants any chance of surviving in the coming years, they're going to have to move quick, because time is ticking. The title of this video is Overwatch 2 vs Paladins isn't fair. The reason that's the case is because it isn't. Overwatch 2 is a newer game made by a AAA company which already has a large fan base due to its previous title. Paladins was built off of nothing and did relatively well early in its lifespan, but due to several reasons I've stated in this video, has gone very downhill. You know, a very wise and mystical tree told me something that reminded me an awful lot of how Paladins was treated in its last few years. You know, Grace, I was once in a white van with Muhammad Ramadan. He was looking at the driver in the front, wearing a black cloak. And as he turned to me, he said, if you don't treat it right, it won't keep up the fight. And that is it for the video, ladies and gentlemen. If you enjoyed, like and subscribe, comment your thoughts and criticisms, follow all the socials in the description, join the Discord, and ah, oh, how could I forget? Paladin's bad, Overwatch 2 better, plus ratio. Thanks for watching, bye bye! Relaxing cuz playing Paladin, so not really relaxing. I'm not gonna lie, that's a sh game. It is, it is, it is a very bad game. It's just Overwatch, but on like, but on like 360p. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's very accurate.